your youth students and parents, tomorrow morning is the big morning. We take off. We're going to be at the church at 1130. So get some good rest. We're going to have a great time. Before I go any further, I want to introduce you to our camp speaker again. I know you guys got a little glimpse of him, I think it was about a couple months ago when we had the Parent Sunday and I uh, gave a little video showing who he was. But I asked him a few questions that I thought it might build a little bit of anticipation as we enter into camp. So uh, check this out. Let's start off with maybe just uh, your family. So how, how long have you been married? I've been married, let's see, I think we got, we just celebrated 12 years. Yeah, 12 years. I hope your wife's not watching you right now. <laughs> she just walked out. So. Okay, good. Because when you, when you hesitate, that's not good. All right, man. And how many kiddos do you got? I have five kids. Five kids. Wow. What I love about, about your story is you guys value biblical discipleship and you're a model. And I'm, I'm sure you're going to be talking about that here at camp, but even in youth ministry, discipleship has always been central to, I'm sure, what you've done. And so just watching how things have unfolded and just even the last year and a half, how you said you've invested in your disciple, man, that's how it's supposed to be. And my prayer is that that's going to be taking place within the youth group here, that we would have some young men and women saying, I'm, I'm ready to own something. I'm, I'm going to own uh, whatever this responsibility is so that I can now take it and then invest in somebody else faithful. So um, having said that, who would be your favorite Bible character besides Jesus? Yeah. Don't don't be all holy uh, on me and say Jesus. I mean, <laughs> but besides Jesus, I, I would probably say Paul. Um, Paul, man, I can't yeah, argue I, there. So, okay, if that's the Bible character that's your favorite, then which one would you say reminds you of you the most? Which one? And be honest, it's okay. It, it could be Goliath. I don't know. But which one yeah. would you say? Would you say this is probably the one who I identify with? Man, uh, probably Mephibosheth. Um, oh he's yeah, this, he's he's just this guy that he's the uh, the son of, of Jonathan, and and David wants to to show kindness to to Saul's family, and Saul was the uh, enemy of David for a long time. And, and then, so the thing about Mephibosheth is that he's crippled, right? He's, yeah. he's lame in the feet. And, um, he's this guy that, that David just takes under his wing and brings him into his house and he sits him at his, at his table. And so it's this, this lame crippled guy who has no business being there is brought to the, the table of the King and he's, and he's provided provision from the King. And, and man, I just, I feel like Mephibosheth, man. I have no business sitting at the king's table, but man. yet he, man, I love it. We were actually, we're going to actually talk about Mephibosheth uh, this week. So, uh, but man, I, I feel like that to me, every time I read about him, I'm like, man, it just brings a tear to my eye because that's such a beautiful picture of, of what the Lord, you Amen. know, has done in my life and, and what he wants to do in yours and, yeah. and, uh, and everybody. So. Yeah, I love that too, man. Praise the Lord. Um, hey, you wanted some, you said you like the mineral water. Uh, what is it called? To, to, Tobo Chico? Uh -huh. So, dude, I'm at Walmart. We're at Walmart yesterday trying to get that stuff. And all I could find was the alcoholic kind. So I was like, <laughs> we, we got a problem. Our camp speaker is an alcoholic and he's asking us to bring liquor to camp. <laughs> I just wanted you to know we don't we can't do that Mason. We we can't bring that well, to the camp. Okay. <laughs> but it must luckily be a, it must be a northern thing then. Uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well I went to we have a Mexican restaurant in town and uh, a Mexican grocery store next to it and I actually found what you want in there. It's the non-alcoholic kind. So, yeah. so you're in luck. Um, the only reason I said that is because I was trying to think who's an alcoholic in the Bible that maybe you'd identify with but <laughs> anyway, that's a joke. Parents, our camp speaker is not really an alcoholic. Um, no. What's your favorite movie? Favorite movie would probably be uh, a series of movies. Um, I like uh, the Hobbit and Lord of the Rings series. <clears throat> awesome. Um, if, I, if I had to pick like a standalone, I'm not a, I, I'm not a big movie guy. Um, 
I don't know. I like movies, but I, I have more time to usually read more. But if I did have a standalone movie, it'd probably be Miracle. Um, oh, it's yeah. like a movie. I grew yeah. up playing hockey and uh, I watched that movie as, as a teenager and just, man, I, I love that movie. So Sweet, sweet. Okay. Uh, favorite, favorite music style? I know there's all kinds of styles and genres of music. What's your favorite style? Yeah. Um, well, it has changed over the years. Like as a teenager, it was metal and, and I'll tell oh, yeah. you. We'll, we'll, we'll have to show some pictures if, if that's okay at some point. But yeah, we might even need you to do some screaming for us. <laughs> yeah. Well, I have uh, completely forgotten how. So yeah, <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> so. But just don't hey, don't say country you. music. You're not going to say country, country music, are you? OK. Now, if we define country music as true country music, then then, yes, I'm a fan of like true country music. But what's on the radio? Country pop. No, I'm not a fan okay. of, I'm a big fan of that. I do like some uh, older country, you know. Fair and, enough. But I like everything currently. I really enjoy um, just kind of I kind of like. Uh, ambient music just kind of background music um and indie rock i mean i like everything i i honestly i know everybody says that but i genuinely i like some jazz i like i still like heavy music oh. from time to time but, sure yeah i got a real serious question i mean this is probably gonna be the most serious one of all would you rather be a ghost or a zombie probably a ghost probably a ghost because no one would i mean if i chose to no one could know that i was around if i'm a zombie okay. i can't fly on a wall you know what i mean <laughs> okay that makes sense okay man last question as camp is approaching we'll be leaving pretty quick here what are you most excited about i know you're excited i know god's been giving you the goods you're we're praying for you like crazy but what would you tell us that hey here's what i'm most excited about for camp this week man i'm i'm just excited that you have decided to get away from the world for a little bit for a little bit because man it's super hard to hear from the lord when there's so much noise and so much distraction and i'm excited that we're all getting collectively as a group you know students uh, you know counselors and, and like, we're all going to get away and we're going to dedicate, a, you know, five days to the Lord. And man, there's always, it's always cool to see what God does when you do something like that. When, when you, when you just dedicate some time and say, Lord, I'm yours, you know, and you may not even have that, that motive going into it, but man, he's going to, he, he's going to show up and he's going to show out just by us being obedient to, to man to come. Mm -hmm. And I'm really excited just to see um what the lord how the lord uses this whenever i was your guys's age um your pastor came and spoke at my camp i don't know if he even remembers that um but mike preached a camp when i was probably 15 14 uh 13 somewhere in there and to this day man it, like i still remember uh i still remember what god did that week and um I just pray that this could be a monument, right? Uh, that you could could set a monument down and look back and always remember Camp 2023 that God did a work in your life, and and uh, and I'm just excited to see what that work is, you know. So that's kind of dude. Praise the Lord, and yeah, it's interesting you say that about Pastor Mike because it would have been I think summer of 1993. He was our camp speaker when I was in high school down wow. in uh, Arkansas, and that was one of the life-changing summers for me was that year at camp. So uh, yeah, big things happen. And I, I like how you worded it when we just detach from the world and then we get saturated in, in the word and in fellowship. So man, well, Mason, we're excited. We're so thankful that you said yes. And there's no doubt about it that you're the one that God chose to give the goods. So we, we totally look forward to seeing you here in person um, pretty quick. And uh, we're just thankful, man. So we love you. Thank you for your time. And uh, we're going to we're gonna be trusting the Lord all week that he's going to speak through you. Well, praise the Lord, man. I'm, I'm super excited to, 
to hang out with you guys, to, you know, whatever we do, shoot hoops. I'm, I'm just excited to be there, and um, and I'm, I'm, I've been praying for you fervently for the last, gosh, for several months, and um, and I love you guys too. I'm looking forward to it. So. Amen. I hope you're excited. You know, last year, Blade was our camp speaker, and he brought it. God spoke through him mightily, and he he surprised me. And I think Mason, he's the man that God chose this year. So there's no doubt about it that uh, God is going to move mightily at camp. There is something about, I, I can't describe this transaction that takes place, but between the speaker, God's spokesman, and then the ears of the listeners, something supernatural takes place. That's what's so powerful about God's Word and just His Holy Spirit and the inspiration behind that. So if we have open hearts and open hear, ears to listen, I, I, God will do anything. And He does this every year at camp. He delivers. So um, we just read about Daniel this week as a youth group. We had a little five-day reading plan. And I want to ask that you would approach this week the way Daniel was. And what, what made Daniel so significant is as a young man, he, he was about most of your guys' age, he was a teenager with convictions. I mean, that man had some convictions deep on the inside that really dictated what he did, how he lived his life. Remember at the very beginning, whenever it said that he, he purposed in his heart that he wouldn't defile himself with the king's meat. And of course, he could have justified it and said, well, it's not that big of a deal. Everybody else is doing it. But he, he, he made it not an option. And it was a conviction he had, and he acted on that conviction. And from then on out, uh, that, that man was an example. And I know a lot of you guys want to be like that. And so my prayer for you is that you would, you would have convictions like he had, like his friends had. Remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? They were commanded to, to bow down to the image. And of course, what did they do? They refused because they had a conviction. In fact, they're the ones who said, um, our God will deliver us, but even if he doesn't, we're not worried about how we're going to answer you. You know, the way they worded it was, it's not even a debate. We're not careful to answer thee. Boy, the king didn't like that. But they had convictions. We need more youth with convictions like that. Biblical convictions, because you're just not seeing much of it around. And we're going to talk about how you can get that, especially this week at camp. And so, um, remember King David? Why was he such a successful king? I, I think it really goes back down to when he was about your guys' age. He was a young man with convictions. He was the one who, he was a shepherd. He was the youngest of all his brothers. Everybody looked down on him. They thought he was a nothing, a nobody. And when uh, his dad sent him on a mission to go bring cheese and food to his brothers, who were the warriors, David willingly obeys. He guides a shepherd to be with his sheep while he's gone. And he, he, he brings what he's supposed to bring. And he hears a big giant taunting them. And when he listens to this giant, he sees everybody else is scared. And of course, Goliath would be that giant. And Goliath is uh, scaring the heck out of all of them. And David says, what happens to the man that takes this uncircumcised Philistine down? I mean, he, he's a reproach to Israel. His brothers then look at him and they say, who do you think you are? In fact, let me just read to you a verse. And if you're quick, you can turn there or you could hit pause and turn there. But it's in 1 Samuel chapter 17. This was Eliab, verse 28. David's oldest brother says, it says his kindle or his anger was kindled. And it says, he goes, why camest thou down hither? And with whom camest thou uh, who have you left those sh few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thy heart, for thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. He's basically saying, David, go back to the sheep. You're just a prideful young man. You don't belong here. Look what it says next in verse 29. And David said, what have I now done? Is there not a cause? And that right there is what we need more of. We need youth. We need young men and women with convictions on the inside to say, I don't care what you think. There's a major cause. There's Christians living in fear. My peers, they have no hope. And yet, I've got something that the God of this universe has put inside of me. 
Is there not a cause? Yes, there is. I want to be a solution to that. And so that, that's how that's really how David started. And from then on out, he was a young man with convictions. And so my prayer is that camp this week, that God would instill some convictions within you. And I'm talking about the kind of convictions to where it might not even be convenient for you to do something for Jesus and you'll still do it. We just don't see much of that happening in today's Christianity. We're quick to, to tell God that we're a part of him, but when it comes to getting out of our comfort zone, see ya. It's time for us to serve God with our all, not just our leftovers. That's what camp's gonna do for us. And so um, maybe at camp, you're one of these two types of people. One, this will be the first time ever that you're gonna establish a relationship with God. Praise the Lord. I hope and pray that that happens because that's the most important decision you will ever make. It was camp, uh, summer of 1994, that revolutionized my life where I, I got my relationship with Christ established rock solid for the first time. I would say that's when I made him my Lord and it's not been the same since. I've fallen since then. I'm far from perfect since then but he's never left me and forsaken me. And so from the inside out, man, there's been a transformation and our prayer is that that's, that'll be a reality in your life. Oh, maybe you'll be the second kind of person and you're gonna, maybe you've already been saved and he's already inside of you, but uh, there's a lack of convictions and you know it. You know that there's some changes that need made and we're gonna let the Holy Spirit do a work in you there because uh, the atmosphere is gonna be perfect for that. And my prayer is that the ground would be fertile soil, that your heart would be moldable. And so you're probably not gonna have any idea what God's gonna lay on your heart. Let's anticipate, let's trust him. I'm doing the same thing. I, I need these messages just as much as you guys do. So whatever the case, we're gonna worship the Lord. Are we gonna have a good time? Absolutely, as we always do, but we're gonna worship the Lord. And remember something, when real worship takes place, we leave differently. We learned that a couple months ago at our, our parent night. We talked about how when the wise men went to worship King Jesus, they left a different way. So anytime real worship takes place, that's guaranteed to happen. So parents, your students are gonna come home differently for the good, for the good. And so uh, let's be ready to be changed. And I will see you guys tomorrow morning at 1130, no later than 1130. And uh, if you need, need forms, if you need anything else, I mean, the last minute questions, don't hesitate to contact us.